Our friends from Argentina, great to see you. And everybody else, welcome aboard. And of course, welcome, get ready for it, Dave Willits! Yeah. Right, that's it now. We're afternoon. Up. Just about afternoon, aren't we? Afternoon. Okay, Dave. Always start with the same question. Yeah. And it's a big question. Oh my gosh. How did you get into music? Well, uh, I mean, getting into music is different than getting into the business. But getting into the music really started with my mum and my dad. And uh, my mum played the piano, and my dad played a mean comb and tissue paper. And it was <laughs> always, um, you know, whenever there was two or more of the family around, it was always a sing song around the piano. And, uh, and this went on for years and years and years. And unfortunately, my mum sadly passed away about four years ago. Um, but even up until that time, every time we got together, it always started with, it's a long way to Tipperary, pack up your trousers and you're not going to hang out the washing on the zip. And it, all, it was all of that, all the time. And, uh, and that's how I kind of got into music. And, and when I was, I think, nine, eight or nine, uh, my mum and dad said, what do you want for Christmas? And I couldn't, I didn't need another pair of socks. So, uh, so I said, I'd like a guitar. And uh, I said, okay, so let's see what we can do. And I was so grateful to them actually that they bought me a proper guitar, not a children's plastic guitar that you can never tune the strings to. And I was so grateful for them for doing that. And I, uh, I kind of got into it a little bit. I got into this, into the music of that way. And um, and the, f the first. The tune I learnt on the guitar. Uh, remember the singing nun? Yeah. <laughs> and it was that. And uh, and I kind of went from there. And then uh, one of my cousin's boyfriend played. So he showed me a few chords. And it went from there. And uh, and I started with the, moving on a little bit. Uh, it started with a friend of mine with the folk clubs around all the place. And uh, I. I when I left school, I, I went and lived here. I was working in Wales as an apprentice. I did all the folk clubs around there. And uh, it kind of just evolved from all that. And uh, So that was kind of my love of music, uh, which, as I say, is a little bit different from... Uh, but what about influences at the time? Well, influences, I mean, I can see it now. That my biggest influence when I was... Uh, old enough to appreciate um, kind of the, the way people work and what it takes to be a performer and how you perform and how you break down barriers and all this and my my hero from that age which must have been maybe 11 12 was Sammy Davis Jr. Oh, right. and of all people mm -hmm. and uh, and he, he was one of those people that I thought oh my god the barriers he broke down I mean he was he was the first black artist to headline in Vegas, uh, but they wouldn't give him a dressing room and he had to come in through the kitchens onto the stage. And many, many years later, um, I met him and I thought, oh, it's my hero, it's my hero. And, uh, and I, it's while I was doing Phantom of the Opera and uh, he came to see the show and we got chatting and it was, you know, kind of, oh, Samuel Davis Jr. And I remember going into, uh, into the dressing room one day, it was about four o'clock, because um, the, the, the makeup took about an hour, an hour, an hour and a half to do it those days. So he had to get in early, and the phone rang. And I picked up the phone, he said, uh, Hi, Dave, uh, Sammy's attorney here. And I went, Sammy who? He <laughs> <laughs> said, uh, Sammy Davis, he'd like to invite you to a party tonight. I said, give me 10 seconds to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'll uh, pick her up at 11.30 uh, outside the stage door. See, see you then. And I looked down. I've got the dirtiest trainers, the dirtiest <laughs> jeans, a t-shirt. I thought, I can't go like this. And I said to the makeup, I said, hang five for half an hour, right? And I ran across to Shaftesbury Avenue to the first gentleman's outfitters and I said, I like that shirt, that tie, those trousers, those shoes, that jacket, those cufflinks. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing fitted the, 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 the tailor. And I said, don't worry, Mr. Wilkes, we'll sort it for you, we'll get it done. The tailor's just gone off work. Yeah, come back, I'm come back, what the, let's do this, right. 
half past ten, fantastic, a brown parcel arrived on my clothes. I thought, this is great. <laughs> and uh, 11 o'clock, kind of half an hour, maybe like half past 11. 20 to 12, and I thought someone made a joke here. And a quarter to 12, because the stage door guy can't leave until the last person left. All right, Mr. Willich, your car's here. I looked out the window, and there was a car the length of Regent Street pulled up outside the stage door. And it was now midnight, right? Guy in all his finery, grey, cap, sunglasses, midnight. I thought, I have no idea where I'm going. I thought I'm either going to the best thing ever or I'm going to be abducted in the next time. <laughs> so I got into the car, no idea where I'm going. The guy didn't say where the bottom he went to. Hello. <laughs> so I sat down in the back and we ended up in St John's Wood and we pulled into this driveway and these gates, automatic gates open over to the on, on the gravel driveway. All these cars in the line all crawled up. Mine pulls off. How I get? And unfortunately, my wife couldn't be there. Lynn couldn't be there. And because uh, I'm okay, because she's good at small talk, I'm useless. Yeah. You wouldn't think so, though. I, <laughs> I am useless at small talk, right? But if Lynn had been there, it would have been all right. So anyway, I kind of went, ding dong, bottle of cake to the door. Although <laughs> 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 what's happening? <laughs> Walked in, and there's, and I thought it was going to be show busy, you know, be there to be seen. And the only showbiz people there were myself and Bob Hoskins, and the rest were Sammy Davis's family and friends. And uh, and when I arrived, I kind of I didn't want to look crazy, but I didn't want to do any of that. So I surreptitiously kind of looked around, and he wasn't there. So I'm, I'm chatting to his wife now, Alta wise, and then I get a tap on the shoulder. And I turn around, look down, and there, <laughs> and there was Sammy. And uh, and we chatted for a long, long time because they asked him to play the Phantom in, in Vegas. And so we talked a lot about this. Hi, guys. Hi, oh, yeah. Are you coming in? Come in, come again, sit down, stand up. <laughs> yeah, you can have mine. <laughs> <laughs> there's some seats. I think there's one, one back there. There's yeah. one yeah. here. Can we try this at the back there? Throw it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I worked for Pete Woods, didn't I? Is that, is that round thing? Yeah, it's there. there's, 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 there's three down there. Yeah. Yeah. Not a problem. Cheers. How are you doing? You alright? Oh, I've been thrown out of better places than this. Hi there. Good to see you. Come on in. And uh, I just, I just telling you, relating a story about um, my hero from this side was Sammy Davis Jr. I'm just relating the story to when I was kind of met him. So anyway, tap on the shoulder, and there's Sammy. And we talked a lot, a lot um, about Phantom. And then, you know, when you have bottle moments in your life, things happen, and you want to keep them and put a cork on the top, and now and again take it off and have a look. And this this was my bottle moment. He said, uh, hey, uh, hey Dave, he said, uh, do you know skin? <laughs> I thought, you know, of course you say yes, don't you? Yeah. And I, I, I thought it, it must be on about, it's not you on my skin, right? So I thought, yeah, I know it. Oh,